first and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Ahara Kakadash, Yahweh's name, the Heavenly Father. It means he is Yahweh Shai's name, his son. It means he is who saves. The Prophet Hashem's name, Holy Spirit. Today's lesson is: Is it crazy? Is it a crazy thing to follow the idea? Or to follow the Bible in these times. And the first thing that I guess we need to understand is where we where we sit in the you know, in in society, how we come by these beliefs that we come by. You know, I I guess is it crazy to believe in um uh, could ask is it crazy to believe in things that you can't see or you don't know well I guess we believe in things like electricity things like radiation and we believe in them because of the scientific method the scientific method goes something like this you make observations you think of interesting questions. You formulate a hypothesis that is, you try and guess what's going to happen in the future. You develop testable predictions. You gather data to test the predictions. And from there you develop general theories. And so we believe in electricity and radiation and other things that we cannot see, other forms of energy, um, solar energy, you know, uh, electrons, quarks, not because we can actually see them, but sometimes we, obs we, we formulated hypotheses as to what should happen should our beliefs be true, and we develop testable predictions. And this is the, this is the current way that people in society actually come up with their view of the world what they believe in what things they don't believe in this is a scientific process this is what's considered at the moment logical rational thought so given this is the way that we understand the world and you know most people say oh you know i don't believe in the bible i believe in science the question becomes, can we apply that to the Bible? And what does that ha what happens if we apply that to the Bible? And I haven't really explained that very well, but let's go at, let's have a look at some of um let's have a look at some of the other Let's see, let's see what happens when we apply our knowledge of of uh, events to the Bible. Because the Bible's formulated hypothesis. The Bible claims to know what's going on in the future. Now, if the Bible is real, if we try and develop tests for what was what would have happened in the past, and then tests for what should happen in the future. That it would be the same as applying the scientific method to the to the Bible. That was that is the same process by which we would call scientific discovery. So let's apply science to the Bible. What do we get? What do we get if we apply science to the Bible? Let's have a look. Um these are the things that were predicted to happen to a lot of black people or or to the Israelites. I won't even say black people. To the Israelites in the Bible. Deuteronomy 28 talks about slavery and captivity. I'll leave these. I can go into a few. I might go into a few scriptures, but I'll leave these largely for you guys to, to look at. Deuteronomy 2, 
Or oh, maybe let's break them down. Let's get let's get into it. Let's get this let's get the actual scriptures. Hold on. Deuteronomy twenty eight and forty one. These are the curses that so we'll just backtrack a little. If the Bible is real, applying the scientific method, this is the same method by which we believe in things like electricity. Uh, radiation, theory of rel relativity, gravity, these are all the scientific, these are all the things that have come out from the scientific method, and if we apply it to the Bible, we form the hypothesis that if the Bible is real, the things which are predicted in the Bible should be true, or should have turned out to be true, the Bible is producing a hypothesis, looking at it through scientific eyes, the Bible is saying, well, if God exists, if these things are true, then these things should happen. This is what I predict from my hypothesis. Deuteronomy 28 says, Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All the trees of the fruit of the land of the locusts shall consume. So... Uh, going down to 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and thirst, and in nakedness and in want of things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until you have destroyed thee. So when people were taken from Africa and put into slavery, we were put in yokes of iron. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from the far end of the earth. Far, from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Again, uh, as swift as the eagle flieth, do you know the, the emblem of, of America and those involved in transatlantic slavery has always been the eagle. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou hast trusted that throughout the land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout the land which the Lord has given thee. So, just looking at that, let's 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 get back to this because this shows like what each of the scriptures refer to. So we just talked about Deuteronomy 28, slavery and captivity, having no power to stand against our enemies, being sent back to Egypt in ships, which is Deuteronomy 28, 68. So let's go back to here. We'll see in Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way thereof, whereof I spake unto thee. I shall see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So bondmen and bondwomen basically means being some people that are there to fulfil a debt. You know, and as it was said that the European traders came to Africa and put some of the African leaders into debt or some of the herdsmen who were going around marauding in villages and 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 getting slaves and, and pinching slaves put them into debt by which other people were sold them to them to fulfil this debt. So that kind of shows what's been happening or what's what's that, that kind of proves that the hypothesis of of what the Bible was predicting has therefore come to pass. If we go to Revelations, I think it's nine. Let me have a quick look. Revelation uh, thirteen sixteen, and he causes all both great and sm 
small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man shall buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So that's talking about not being able to buy bread um, or not being able to buy or sell or involve, being involved in commerce unless you have some form of mark now. In those days, a mark was an identification, a way of identifying something, you know. Um, see the mark of Cain, see the mark of Cain was there so that he might be identified and all of his people might be identified. You know, I mean, we can go into that later, but just to understand that the word, the mark, a mark means a way of identifying. And back in the day when people didn't really, all weren't really literate, and they needed to sign something. They would sig- They would mark the paper. You know, usually with a cross, but they would they would put their mark. You know, it's a sign. It's a signal. It's just like a way of identifying. You know, which is now seen to be um, that, that we will have to ha- have some form of ID. Yeah, in order to buy and sell. You know, there won't be any kind of um, free exchange of cash, you know, and other people are, you know, speculating that this may be an RFID chip. Again, ID in the name, remote frequency identification. But it, you know that is speculation. But what we do know is it will be some form of ID. So just to let you know that if these things come to pass. That again, it's proof of the scientific method. It's proof of the hypothesis that if you're looking at the Bible through scientific eyes, it's proof of the hypothesis as set up by the Bible. And if we go back to our original thing on science, oh, where was it? I think it was here. we go back to this if we're being scientific and the hypothesis that are set up in the bible become correct then we should accept the conclusion that this is real and this is something that is likely to happen as readily as we accept the conclusions of protein folding or 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 quantum physics or relativity, gravity, electricity, radiation, we should accept all of those things if we're being scientific and being logical. I think there's one more thing I want to talk about real briefly. Uh, I think it's Revelation 9 actually, so we'll find it real quick. Revelation 9. Uh, 16 and the number of the army and the horsemen was 200,000 thousand and I heard the number of them and I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having blast plates of fire and of Janet and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and brimstone. By, the, by these three was the third part of being killed. So we're talking about a massive fire, a massive war. You know, the army of the apocalypse, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. For the power was in their mouth, and then their tails and were into serpents and into heads, and with them they do hurt. So we're talking about a massive amount of death by fire. Now, and then this, I mean, we've had the massive forest fires, but it hasn't caused that amount of death. We're talking about something that happens, so, you know, quite quickly and causes extreme heat. Let's go to uh, Zechariah 14. 
show, which again moves fast. Behold, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, the women ravaged. Um, yeah, so in fact, 14 and 12. And there shall be a plague wherein the Lord will smite the pe all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So what kind of, like during a war, we're talking about, it sets it up by saying that there will be, you know, people that are coming against Jerusalem, um, or against the people of, of Jerusalem, i.e. the Jews. And that will cause a, a war. There's, this is set during a war, but then during this war, this there will be some form of heat or something that will that will cause people to to be consumed, and then you know as. as they stand on their feet, you know, talking about intense amount of fire, intense amount of heat. And, uh, well, the only kind of war that creates that kind of heat is thermonuclear war, which, which the Bible seems to be predicting in Revelation verse 9, Zechariah verse uh, 14. And I think... Um, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a a, a scroll where the clouds scrolled. Yeah, uh, Revelation six and fourteen, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Isaiah thirty four. And four, and the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and the host shall fall down. And some people say that that is the mushroom cloud. If we go now, we look at uh, current events. that people are actually now being concerned with the prospect uh, just recently of 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 nuclear conflict US chiefs prepare issue terrifying nuclear conflict warning that's the least bad option the world is now getting prepped for the possibility of that which has been hypothesized over 2,000 years ago. The question now becomes, how can you believe in in science and, and yet not believe in the Bible if you're following the same scientific method? And now I generally open it up to um, very interested in finding out what people's rationale is for that. So with that, I'm going to shut off. Say shut off.